Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse, the Dark Knight Joker in his bank robber attire. This is Joker from the beginning of the film when he introduced himself, and you didn't know it was actually the Joker, you thought it was just one of his henchmen. This is San Diego Comic Con exclusive, gold label. Now, I got this from the McFarlane Toy Store. They had a bundle of three figures, and I was very disappointed how they offered this figure to be purchased. I didn't want the bundle. I wanted to order him by himself, as personally, I wanted seven of these Joker as bank robber figures. And I will get them, just not all at once, unfortunately. I'm going to use them for Joker thugs or henchmen. I think they are perfect for that bill. If anyone knows where else I could possibly order them from, drop me a line in the comments below. I did place an order at Amazon UK about two weeks ago, and they still haven't shipped. So I'm looking for an alternative place to get them from. I've read some rumors that people are finding them at Target down south. But I'm not sure if that's fully accurate or if people are just messing with me. I don't know. I took the barcode into Target, and it wasn't even on file. So that does kind of contradict that. Anyway, looking for five more of these guys. And very disappointed that they forced you to get the bundle. So... Let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see the top, 22 moon parts, McFarland Toys, part of the Gold Label Collection, H12+, plus, DC Multiverse, the Joker, as Bank Robber. He comes with two heads and then two alternate hands, totally four interchangeable hands, display stand, and a collector's card. I can only think of two other figures in the entire McFarland DC Multiverse line that came with an alternate head, and that's the White Knight Joker and then the Flashpoint Flash. Hope they do more of this moving forward. I think it's awesome. One side of the package, the Joker bank robber from the Dark Knight. Other side, the Joker bank robber. The bottom, a bunch of credits, and there's his barcode if that helps anybody. And on the back side, you can see that bank robber Joker mask, similar to the Poliachi clown. So, no further ado, let's open him up. And I did end up getting two of these figures. Normally, I would say one of which you open and enjoy, and want to keep it open, but in this case, I'm going to open them both. And I'm looking to get five more of these figures. I want to keep it open, and I want a total of six of these out of the package. I want to make myself a DC Multiverse Joker gang, and these guys are going to be perfect for that purpose. Shaman you McFarlane for not offering them by themselves. I even emailed them asking if they were going to be offering them by themselves, and they pretty much said, not at this time. So hopefully, Target, Amazon UK, CMD Store, one of those places will help me out. But as of now... They have not. And I did get the entire bundle of three figures from the McFarland Toy Store. Like I said, very disappointed with how they offered these things. I've been looking forward to this Bank Robber Joker for a very long time. And offering the bundle, they did me dirty. And to add insult to injury, the box they shipped these six figures to me in. DC Multiverse 7-inch The Joker, Dark Knight, Bank Robber variant, Case Pack 6. So... I really, really wanted to get six of these guys open to have a squad of Joker goons. And I couldn't order that because of the way they offered to sell them. And then the toy guys are out there fucking with me and they actually send it into a box that potentially should have been six bank robber Jokers. Wow. For the life of me, why McFarlane wouldn't just sell them individually like all their other figures is beyond me. Normally they'll sell each figure single and then you can buy the bundle to save a little bit of money. This time it was only the bundle. And that really sucks. One of the rare times I actually wanted to get a whole bunch of a certain figure. Army building is one of my specialties. If anybody out there has an extra bank robber joker, wants to get rid of it, doesn't really care for it, or knows where I can order some, please let me know. It is much appreciated. In the meantime, I'll settle for my two. Sometimes it's very confusing and frustrating what these companies do. McFarlane, I have more money for you. You will not let me give it to you. You will not take it. I do not understand why. Frustrating. All right. Now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with a display stand, a collector's card, two alternate hands, totaling four interchangeable hands, and then an alternate unmasked Joker head. But before we take a look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So, so far, I am very pleased they delivered. It's about 85% the exact same sculpt and pieces as the Dark Knight Joker figure. But you know what? It works. It looks great. The mask, the paint detail is fantastic. This is actually Heath Ledger as the Joker from the opening scene of the Dark Knight. But to me, this is going to be a Joker thug or henchman. You can never have too many Joker thugs. 
this guy is going to be totally be a seven inch scale Joker thug for my different various multiverse Joker figures. And that is one of my specialties. Army building, I love it. Toy companies always make Batman, Robin, and the Joker and Riddler. But what about the henchmen? Typically in the comics or the movies, Batman has to get through all these different thugs and henchmen to get to the actual supervillains. And that's something action figures are lacking in. My specialty is army building and giving my different supervillains armies, lairs, thugs, and henchmen. And they did not disappoint. Somehow, I'll get some more down the line. I imagine there'll be a CMD store or one of those places eventually. I don't know. Keep my eyes open. They're only high dollar right now because they're new and they're hard to get. That will not be the case in the long run. I have the Mattel version of this figure. Numerous of them. I have the Mayfix version. A couple of them as well. Like I said, armor building is my specialty, especially Joker Thugs and Henchmen. Let's take a look at him. I will tell you, the mask looks awesome. The paint job is just perfect. That frowning face. I believe this is based off of Pagliacci. Well, this one is based off of the Caesar Romero Joker that wore a very similar mask in the CC6 show, but that was based off the old opera singer or play or whatever, Pagliacci, about a sad clown, exactly what this guy looks like. And if you look close, I probably can't see on camera, they actually have sort of his head sunken in there behind the mask, and there are actual eyes in there, but they're sunken in. A very good job of simulating it there. Like I said, the makeup is just perfect on this head. I love it. You can see his hair in the back, kind of green. As we go down, paint detail on the shirt is fantastic underneath the jacket. Now, the soft goods here is different, but the arms, the legs, the diaper, it's all 100% the same as the Dark Knight Joker. But it works. It looks great. I like the pinstripe pants, like the jacket, paint detail on the shirt, paint detail on the mask. Excellent. Very, very pleased with the result here. And here are both of the Joker Thug figures with their accessories laid out. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I am just very impressed with the sculpt and paint job on this Joker mask. It looks great. And like I said, he has these eyes that are painted and sucking into his mask. Very well done. I'm not sure how well you can see it. Maybe a little better now. It looks just so much better in person than I'm seeing on here. I don't know. Just an excellent job there, McFarlane. Very, very well done. And here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories, and let's start with the boring stuff. Here's the display stand. Two of McFarlane stand we've seen time and time again. It's a black circle. Very thin. Very basic. Now for his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of the very specific Joker Henshaw mask from the opening scene of The Dark Knight which actually turned out to be the Joker himself. Joker, bank robber from the Dark Knight, the backside. So there's the description if you want to read that. Pause now. Now let's check out his hands. He has a total of four of them, two left hands and two right hands. And while this is odd, here are the four hands from one figure and here are the four hands from another. On the left side, it damn sure looks like he has three different trigger fair hands and one fisted hand. And on the right side, it looks like he has two regular gripping hands, one trigger finger gripping hand, and then a fisted hand. I don't know, it looks like they screwed up on mine. Here he is, with his first pair of hands. These are his gripping hands. And here's his second pair of hands. His right hand looks to be a gripping hand with a trigger finger. That's for the gun that he does not come with. And then his left hand is a fist. On my other one, it looks like his first two gripping hands are actually trigger finger hands. And you know what? I'll take it, this guy could definitely look cool with two different guns at the same time. But it's odd how I seem to have two different sets of hands with each figure. Some sort of factory error. Now for his heads, he has a total of two of them. One from his bank robber thug head from the beginning of the film. And then the other one, his main Joker unmasked head from the rest of the film. Here's the Joker with his first head. This is the masked head to me. This is a Joker thug henchman. And here he is with the unmasked Joker head. Now those are all the accessories that this Joker figure comes with, but it'd be nice if we came with a couple of other things. First of all, a Joker mask. The Mayfix figure came with a Joker mask like this, so I can use that for this Joker. You can see the mask. It's just the front part. 
It doesn't actually attach on top of the figure, but you can hold it to the side. It's a nice accessory. Here's the Joker holding this mask. I think it looks pretty cool. Just a picture like this tells you he just took this mask off his face, exposing that he actually is the Joker. I remember one of the opening scenes of the film, he's sort of standing with his back toward you, holding that mask, and then the movie gets started. And it just so happens that I have two of these masks because I got two of the Mafex Joker bank rubber figures. This will be really cool when you do some head swaps, throw some random heads on these guys, and you'll have a couple of Joker henchmen that just took their masks off. Unfortunately, I don't have six of these masks. If you want to get the rest of these figures. Another accessory he should have come with are some guns. Now it's not McFarlane's fault. Warner Brothers has a no gun mandate. Any officially licensed DC figures cannot come with regular guns in any way, shape, or form. It seems like maybe they're a little bit looser on that than they were a couple years ago, as Mr. Freeze comes as Freeze right now. But you're not going to see a pistol or shotgun or machine gun with any of these figures. McFarlane did make a weapons pack completely separate, so I pulled out a couple pistols from that. I just see this guy holding a pistol, supporting Joker, but you can give him all kinds of different guns. Here's two larger pistols, and then two smaller pistols. These are both for the McFarlane weapons pack number one. Here's this Joker thug holding a smaller pistol. A perfect fit. Now they've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Now starting at his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 7.2 inches tall, which could translate to just over 18 centimeters. Now for his articulation, starting with his head here, of course you can rotate from side to side, you can look up and down about that far, not too much, to the head from one side to the other, shoulders on a ball joint, goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, because he doesn't have that butterfly joint, or fake butterfly joint, whatever you want to call it, that McFarland figures have, he's got kind of drop down shoulders as a result, you can see they can kind of go up, back down, normally there's an extra sort of piece here, a circle, kind of keeping it in place. Not a big deal. It doesn't look bad. Except for if you leave it like that. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows below that. His wrist can rotate and it is going to be hinged as well. His torso, he's got the soft goods overlay. A little bit squishy, kind of hollow inside of there. Now there is articulation in there. Kind of give it a, do a little bit of stuff, but you're not going to get any of that stick, so it's pointless. What you're going to get anything out of some waist here, rotate around, forward and back, tilt from side to side. Legs, complete does the splits. You can see it sort of pushes that in there. It looks kind of bad like that. Not a ball joint, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation, non existent. Forward, about that far. Back, not much. Double jointed knees below that. And that is ankle, forward and back. Rotate. Tilt rock, although mine's a little bit stuck. And of course, to articulation. Here's the Joker breaking out of a bank vault. He's got two of his thugs or henchmen in front of him, both carrying out duffel bags of money, and they're all armed and ready for Batman. Now check them out. Next to some other action figures. And let's start off with some other Joker thugs or Joker figures. Here's the McFarlane Dark Knight Joker as Bank Rubber Thug, next to the Mafex version. I got two of these Mafex figures because Joker thugs. And here he is, next to the Mattel Dark Knight Movie Master version of Joker as a bank robber. This is originally a Maddie Collector exclusive, but then it got a wide release later. I got six of these Mattel Joker as bank robber figures. Did a head swap on one, that way I could have him holding the unmasked head. Nice army of Joker thugs or henchmen. Six inch scale, and now we have the full seven inch scale versions. Now let's check them out. Next is some other officially licensed Joker thugs or Joker henchmen figures. The oldest and first one I can think of is this Toy Biz 1989 Batman Pop the Goon figure. I thought it was so cool to have sort of a henchman to work with Joker. Back in those days, you got Batman, Robin, Joker, Riddler, Mr. Freeze, that type of stuff, but you never got a thug or henchman. This guy will always have a special place in my heart as being the original thug or henchman DC figure. And pretty recently, I got a custom of Bob the Goon 7-inch DC multiverse scale. Big shout out to my boy OG Trilogy for making that for me. The next Joker thug or henchman figure I can think of is going to be from the Kenner, which eventually turned into Hasbro, Batman Beyond line. We have three different Joker thugs they made in the line, which I thought was really cool. You have a little Joker thug or gang or army 
And then the guy on the far edge, it's like they actually made a little midget Joker thug. Yeah, these guys are scaled up way smaller, but those guys are definitely supposed to be little clown midgets. And not that I have a problem with that, but I guarantee if they made something like that nowadays, somebody would have a problem with that. In addition to Mattel making a joker as bank robber thug in their movie master line, before that they made an actual joker thug or henchman. I have eight of them in front of you. The one on the far left was customized into another one of the joker henchmen from the beginning, and the one on the far right has an unmasked head. And then the next Joker henchman I can think of was from DC Direct, from the video game Batman Arkham City. They made this Joker thug, and there were two different paint variations, giving you essentially two different characters. Of course, that wasn't enough for me. I had to already build them. There are six of them in front of you. DC Direct even made the main unique Joker henchman from the game. This is Mr. Hammer, a Siamese twin, and his separated other Siamese twin brother was Mr. Sickle and worked for the Penguin. I always found those two henchmen extremely unique and cool. After that, Mattel made Panda Man from the Suicide Squad film. He was part of their Mattel DC Multiverse line. And while these aren't technically Joker henchmen, DC Collectibles made Mime and Marionette in their Doomsday Clock line. These two figures aren't necessarily Joker henchmen. They actually came from the Watchmen universe, got incorporated into the DC universe. They did work for the Joker very briefly in that comic series, but in my action figure world, they are totally Joker thugs or henchmen. Unique ones at that. And finally, we have these new McFarlane DC Multiverse Dark Knight figures. The Joker as a bank robber thug. Now technically, these are actually the Joker figures, but in my action figure world, they are Joker thugs and henchmen, and I can't wait to get the other four that I want to complete my little gang here. Now let's check them out. Next is some other McFarlane DC Multiverse Army Builders. And a lot of the ones I used for Army Builders were not intended that way. Here he is, next to the first one. This is the White Knight Joker. He was part of the GTO, Gotham Terrorist Suppression Unit. And you know what? I decided to make my own GTO. I got a total of nine of these guys, did some head swaps, and I have my own personalized GCPD police unit. The next one I have, and this is the first true Army Builder they made, was the Robin Crow. They made three different variations, and I have a total of 16 of them. The next McFarland figure that I army built was the Planet of Chase variant of the Injustice 2 Gorilla Grodd. The regular version had gold armor, and I used that for Gorilla Grodd. And the Planet of Chase variant had silver armor, and I got a few of these to use as his Gorilla soldiers and his Gorilla army. Then, I army built the Drifter Bruce Wayne from the Batman. Now this guy was definitely not intended to be an army builder. They made both the regular, masked, and unmasked versions of the Drifter. But I looked at his outfit, and I thought this would be a great Gotham City thug or henchman. So I got a total of 80 of these guys, did head swaps on 5 of them, and I have 5 extra thugs or gang members. I also already built the Riddler from the Batman. Now I was planning to get 6 of these guys, but I thought, eh, I'll find them on clearance eventually. And I never really did. I don't think I've ever seen this guy for cheaper than maybe $18. And then here he is next to the most recent McFarland DC Multiverse armor builders. At least that I can recall. This is Talon. Now specifically, this is the William Cobb version of Talon, which is a unique version of Talon. But it's not really noticeable. The differences are negligible. Makes for a great army builder for your quarter vowels. And finally, we have this Joker as bank robber thug. This guy is not supposed to be an army builder. It's supposed to be the Joker himself. But in my action figure world, it is a Joker thug or henchman. And I will get four more. Now check him out. Next is some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is with the Dark Knight Trilogy Wave. Could like to build Bane from the Dark Knight Rises. And here he is, next to the Dark Knight Trilogy, Jokerized, Batman and Joker. They are going to be completing the entire wave, so we will be getting a Jokerized, Two-Face, Scarecrow, and Bane in the near future. And then here he is, with the rest of this wave. Bane with Jacket, Jokerized Bank Robber, and then Sonar Joker. These are the gold label Dark Knight Trilogy San Diego Comic Con exclusive figures. Now rumor is there's going to be some New York Comic Con exclusive Dark Knight figures. I believe we have Jail Cell Joker versus Batman with a Jail Cell diorama. And then I think that Jail Cell Joker may also get a single release. We'll know soon. Now let's check him out. Next to some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here he is. Next to all the different San Diego Comic Con exclusive figures. We have the three gold label Dark Knight Trilogy figures. Then we have the 30th anniversary Netball Batman, 
the 85th anniversary Superman, the Page Punchers Sketch Mr. Freeze, and the Dark Knight's Metal Alan Scott Dread Lantern. Here's the Joker Thug next to Abyss. Abyss is the only figure I have so far for McFarland's Collector Edition, but the rest are on the way. And there's a Platinum Chase variant of each of those three figures, and I'm hunting for them. If somebody has a lead or has an extra, please drop me a line in the comments below. Then, next to the Blue Beetle movie figures, we have the regular Blue Beetle, the Battle Mode Blue Beetle, and then Carapis. And now, next to some recent McFarland Toy Store exclusive gold label figures, we have Superman in his Unchained Armor, the Patina variant, Catman, Dick Grayson Robin, and Kyle Rayner Blue Lantern. Now let's check them out. Next is some recent Tart exclusive gold label figures. Here's the Joker Thug. Next is Superman vs. Doomsday 2 pack. And here he is. Next is some Target exclusive Joker Eyes figures. Then, with even more Target exclusive figures, we have the Sinestro Core Batman, Ted Cord Blue Beetle, Flash War Impulse, and Dead Man. And now, next to the Target exclusive Flashpoint Wave, we have the Flashpoint Aquaman, Project Superman, and Flash himself. Here's this Joker Henchman. Next to the Injustice 2 3 pack. Batman, Supergirl, and Doctor Fate. And here he is. Next to some recent Walmart exclusive gold label figures. We have the Vampire Joker, Batman and Superman, Captain Atom, Beast Boy, and Eradicator. Then, next to the most recent Batman Wave, we have the Nightfall Batman, Batman Incorporated Batwing, and Batman Reborn, Two Faces Batman. And now, next to the Goofy Head Sculpt, Reaper for Superman vs. Ultraman 2 pack. Here's the Joker Thug, next to the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive, Black and White Accent, Superman and Flash. Then, next to the fifth wave of Page Punchers, this is a Batman themed wave, Fighting the Frozen. We have Batman, Robin, Batgirl, Mr. Freeze. There's a plenty of chase variant to this Batgirl, and I'm on the hunt for her. And finally, next to the most recent Build a Figure wave, this is the Titans wave, Collect a Build Beast Boy. Now let's check him out. Next to some action figures from different various companies. So we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you have no lines you can mix them with. Since he's a McFarland toy, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect. They work way smaller, and I'm going to include as many Joker and Joker-related figures I can during these comparisons. Here he is, next to some McFarland Joker figures. Then, next to even more McFarland DC Multiverse Joker figures. And now... Next is some Jack specific wrestling figures. Here's this Joker Thug, next to a container of sprinkles. And here he is. Next is some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Joker figures. And here he is, standing with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, with some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here he is. Next is some Mezco 112 collected figures. Then, with some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse Joker figures. And here he is, next to some Make Fix Joker figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts Joker figures. And finally, with some Jazz Wars Pornet figures. So overall, I love this figure. I think he is fantastic. It is right up my alley with Army Building, Joker Thugs and Henchmen. That is my specialty. Definitely disappointed the way McFarland offered to sell these guys. I cannot stress that enough. And I will find my other five Joker thugs in one way or the other. But I'm sure not going to buy that bundle five more times. Hell no. Hopefully my word from Amazon will end up going through. If not, I'll find another way. These will be available for a fair price in the long run. His accessories are pretty cool. Although there are a couple of things he should have come with. Maybe a duffel bag, a gun, and a mask. His articulation is everything you'd expect from a modern McFarland decent multiverse figure. Maybe a little bit limited in a couple areas because the suited body. It's a lot of reuse on this guy, and honestly, it's smart reuse. It looks great. The paint job and sculpt are excellent on this guy. If I were to rate this figure, I almost want to give him a 9 out of 10. And you know what? I think I am. I'm really enjoying this guy a lot. He's getting a very high rating from me because it's an awesome figure and it's the kind of figure I really like. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. 
Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.